This is Bob Capetta, professor of mathematics at College of DuPage in Glen Ellen, Illinois. And this is a lesson for Mathematics for Health Sciences, and here we're going to look at reading the Z table. The Z distribution corresponds to the standard normal distribution, and that is a very famous, if not the most famous, distribution in all of statistics. And it has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. Now, there are many ways for us to determine Z probabilities, in this class, we're going to use a Z table. And to talk about what that means, we're going to consider the question the probability Z is less than 1.25. We want to visualize that representation. We want to go ahead and identify that value by looking at the table. But first, we're going to look at it using technology. So I have a graph of a normal distribution. And notice the mean, mu is a symbol that we use for mean, and sigma is a symbol we use for standard deviation if they are parameters, but that's not a big issue. This is a distribution that has a mean of zero and a standard deviation of one. And I am interested in the probability that we are less than zero. And you'll notice one half of the data is less than zero, and one half of the data is more than zero. But the question that we had on our earlier slide was the following. What is the probability Z is less than 1.25? So I'm going to go back to the piece of technology and I'm going to plug in a Z value of 1.25 and we're going to visualize how much area is to the left of that value. So 1.25 will go here. And then we will say we get 0.89435. So you'll notice 1.25 is the blue line here and 0.89435 is the answer that we get from technology. Eight, nine, four, three, five. Now we also want to go ahead and see what this is using the Z table. So we're going to go ahead and go to Blackboard and open up the Z table and see how that behaves. So looking at this you will notice on the left hand side one of our buttons is statistics tables. So if I click on that you will see that the first one that shows up is the Z table. Let's take a look at what that Z table is and how we read it. So you'll notice we have positive Z scores and we are looking for 1.25. So down the left hand side, this is taking cumulative area from the left, how much area is to the left of the Z score, which is what technology gave us. And we want 1.25. So we go down here to the row that 1.2 is in. This is 1.20, 1.21, 1.22, 1.23, 1.24, 1.25 1 from the Z table gives us 0.8944. Now how did that compare to what we had before? 0.8944 indeed would be correct for this to two decimal places. So that seems like uh, we've got the correct answer there. For our next example, we're going to look at the probability Z is less than negative 2.31. So we want to visualize this if we can. So we're going to go back to the internet application and see what that looks like. So this time we want to go to the left. So if we go to the left of negative 2.31 and ask the computer to draw ourselves a picture, let's think about it first. Negative 2.31 is about here, so there's not very much to the left of that. The entire area under the curve is 1, so if we're less than negative 2.31, we don't expect very much. We expect it to be relatively small. So let's see what we get. It's giving me 0.01044. So let's make that change, 01044. And uh, now we want to go ahead and compare that to the Z table. So we should get essentially the same number. We're going to pull up the Z table. We're going to look for negative 2.31. So we'll see if we can find that. So looking at this table, you'll notice it says positive z-scores on this page. We're looking for negative 2.31. So we will scroll it down here, and you will notice there's negative 2.3, negative 2.30, negative 2.31. So the number we get here is 0.0104, which indeed agrees with what we had before. Let's put that in, 0.01. So you can see we get the same number whether we use technology or whether we use the Z table. Technology gives us an extra decimal place. 
but the z-table is certainly sufficient for us. Okay, we're going to change it up a little bit here. We're going to look for the probability z is greater than a number. So in our first two examples, we looked at the probability z was less than something. But here we're going to look at the probability z is greater than 0 0.76. And we can do that immediately on the internet. So on the internet app, I will put 0 0.76 in for x. You'll notice one of the options enables us to go greater than. And it draws it for us. It gives us this pink region to the right of about 0.76. The blue number is supposed to be at 0.76. And to the right of 0.76, we have 0.22363. So let's go ahead and put that back on the slide. But now the question is, how do we do that on the Z table? And the problem is, the Z table only gives us the area to the left. So if we want to do this area to the right on the z table, we've got to take 1 minus the probability that z is less than 0 0.76, which is going to equal 1 minus whatever number it gives us. So we're going to go ahead and see if we can find what the probability z is less than 0.76 on this uh, normal table. So let's go back to the table and see how that works. So I recognize we were on the negative z-scores before. So let's scroll back up to the positive z-scores. We want 0.76. So 0.7 is this row, 0 0.70, 0 0.71, 0 0.72, 0 0.73, 0 0.74, 0 0.75, 0 0.76 and we get 0.7764. That's the area to the left of 0.76 is 0.7764. Remember, we want the area to the right of 0.76. We're going to take 1 minus 0.7764. So making that substitution, 1 minus 0 0.7764 should be 0 0.2236 which you will notice is essentially the same as the number that we received from the internet app. Okay, for our next question, we're going to ask which z-score corresponds to the 60th percentile? So what is the z-score I need to be better than or higher than 60% of the elements in that data set? We're going to do that with guess and check on the internet app, and then we will have a way to do that on the z-table as well. So let's pull up the internet app and again, find the z-score that corresponds to the 60th percentile. I'm going to go ahead and make this less than again, which is what I need. And I want something that corresponds to the 60th percentile. So right now I have uh, 0.77637. I want to adjust these numbers until I get just about 0 0.60. So I have to go lower than that. If I go to 0.5, I'm at 0.69. I've got to go lower than that. 0.4, okay, keep going to the left, 0.3, we're getting pretty close, 0.2, let's go up a little bit, 0.25, awfully close to uh, 0 0.60, 0 0.26, that may be the best we're going to get. If we really want to try to nail it right on um, 0 0.60, 0 0.255 I'd say is a pretty good answer. So let's go ahead and write that back on the um, slide and then we'll see if we can do the same thing using the z-table. So here we'll say p60 is approximately 0 0.255, which means if you have a z-score of 0 0.255, you are better than 60% of the population. Now, how do we do this on the z-table? The difference is, is we've got to look in the body of the table and find the z-score that corresponds to 0.6. So let me pull that up and we'll discuss it. And the goal here is to look for the z-score that has a probability of about 0.60. So you'll notice here 0.5987, pretty close to 0 0.6. 0.6026, pretty close to 0.6. So maybe the safest thing to do would be to take the average of those two. What does 0.5987 correspond to? Let's see, 0.2 here, 5. So this is 0.25 and this is 0.26. So if we would average those, our best guess would be about 0.255.
So you'll notice here we made the exact same prediction to say uh, P60 is approximately 0 0.255. So let's do one more question here and ask which z-score corresponds to the 10th percentile. So which z-score will only beat 10% of the population? So 90% better, 10% worse. That's the question we want to ask here. So we'll go to the internet app and see if we can find that. If we're going to get the 10th percentile, we better go to some negative numbers. And I only want to be better than 10%. So let's try negative 2. And what is that going to give us? That's only better than 2%. So how about negative 1.5? 7%, negative 1.3. That's pretty close. Negative 1.2, negative 1.25, eh, awfully close. Negative 1.24, negative 1.23, well, I guess I'm going the wrong way. Negative 1.26, 7, 8. Negative 1.28 is pretty good. If I go to negative 1.29, is it any better? So I think we're going to stick with our answer, our best approximation of negative 1.28. If you wanted to add another decimal place, you could say uh, negative 1.285, 81. I don't see us doing any better than that. So let's say that our best guess here for the 10th percentile is negative 1.281. So I put the number on the slide to say that from the internet app, it appears as if the 10th percentile is about negative 1.281. We want to see if we get the same thing on the z-table. So I'm looking for 10% inside the table. Well, you'll notice that the smallest the positive side starts at is 0 0.50. So I've got to go to the negative z-scores to find 0.10. And I will do my best to find that. What's the closest I can get to 0 0.10? 0 0.1003. You'll notice is negative 1.2 up to the top. 8. Negative 1.28 seems to be what we're looking for. We can finish this by saying from the Z table, P10 is approximately negative 1.28, which again is very similar to what we had on the internet app. And that will complete this lesson.